Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Talks Japandy, I'm going to be sharing with you five habits I developed while living in Japan. Coming up. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome to a brand new episode of Andy Talks Japandy. In today's episode, guys, I'm going to be sharing with you five habits I developed living in Japan. Now, just a little disclaimer before we get too into it. A lot of these habits I already had before coming out to Japan, but since I came to Japan, I developed the habits, as it were, and just kind of refined a lot of these. So with that said, here we go. And the first habit I developed while living in Japan is not wearing shoes indoors. Now, this is kind of a typical American habit is、uh, wearing their shoes indoors. Even while I was living in America, and even now, whenever I get home or get to a friend's house, if I'm staying there for a long period of time, I look for the first opportunity to just get rid of my shoes, whether that's putting them in the little closet by the door, or in my case, going to my room and just taking my shoes off.、Uh, I look for the first opportunity. To do so. And、uh, obviously, in Japan, they have a little Genkan area, which is like the foyer. And that's the first opportunity to get rid of your shoes before you enter the apartment, house, wherever. They also have it for a lot of like fancy Japanese restaurants as well. So that's kind of ingrained within their culture. And it's not just a cultural thing, too, it's also a cleanliness issue. That's the main thing, especially. Being a single dude, when I was in the Navy, I was hella busy working 12, 15 hour day. Really didn't have time to clean. And if you've seen some of my apartment tour videos, you really know I didn't have time to clean. If I just made it easy on myself and not tracked in more dirt, made my life way easier. And、uh, when I came back to America, kept the habit going. And I remember、uh, that first apartment when I was living up in、uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, I had suffered some water damage in my bedroom. And、uh, the apartment manager came over to assess the damage. And he was looking at my living room carpet and he said, Wow, this is actually like really clean. Like most people who、uh, are in the apartments, the carpet's like all kinds of dirty and stuff from tracking dirt in and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I、ah, just take my shoes off at the door and that definitely helps. So it is definitely noticeable. And so the second habit I developed while I was living in Japan is walking more. Now, I started really going on long walks when I was out in college, out at Urbana University in Urbana, Ohio, way back in the day. And I started because my friend Dan would go on walks,、um, just kind of out and about, either in town or walk the old country roads just to kind of help clear the old、uh, head brain, as it were. So I ended up joining him on a couple walks. We'd have some nice. Deep conversations about philosophical things, or just simply enjoying each other's company and just kind of chilling in the environment. Love doing that. And then once I、uh, came back to my hometown, Salina, Ohio,、um, I started riding my bike a lot more and just exploring my town without having to need a car to do so. And before I got out to Japan, I was stationed out in San Diego. And、uh, that's pretty much how I got around was, you know, my own two feet. And you know, taking the buses and、uh, the train to go to downtown San Diego. But most of the time, I was just hoofing it, man, you know, just walking around on my own two feet. And once I got out to Japan and got my own apartment, I bought myself a bicycle, was able to bike back and forth to work. So I didn't have to pay、uh, train ticket money for that. Ended up recouping the、uh, cost of the bike in less than a month, actually. And it helped、uh, keep the old stomach in check for the most part. Actually, since I've been doing daily walks for the past couple months, I've managed to lose about 25, going on 30 pounds just doing that. And so, the third habit that I developed while living in Japan was drinking unsweetened tea and unsweetened coffee, black coffee. Before I came out to Japan, I tried some unsweetened green tea, some Oi Ocha, which is the most popular brand of bottled green tea out in Japan. I、uh, managed to get a bottle from、uh, one of the Japanese import shops out in San Diego. It's a whole slew of them. And I made some videos of my time out there. The area is called、uh, Kearney Mesa, by the way. So I've made like a whole series of videos of my time out there. Definitely check those out.、Uh, but anyway, I got a little bottle of unsweetened green tea out there. I tried it and it was just so bitter and it was such a chore to get through. I was just like, ugh, ugh, so bad. <laughs> I could. 
barely handle it. But I managed to finish the bottle and I was just like, Jesus, ugh, so bad. By the time I got it to Japan, I tried a different bottled uh, green tea. Yeah, it was much more palatable to me. <laughs> that rhymed. One of my favorite uh, bottled green tea flavors is Ayataka. Quickly became one of my favorite flavors one day when uh, one of my shipmates came up to me while I was buying it out of the vending machine. She was like, oh, you're getting turtle tea? I'm like, turtle tea? What are you talking about? She's like, yeah. So she pointed to uh, the little pot on the bottle there and she said, yeah, it looks like a, a long neck turtle. You know, here's the neck, there's the body and there's the little tail sticking out. And I was like, oh my God, that's fucking adorable. I'm going to call this turtle tea from now on. And I did. So... Whenever you get a bottle of Ayataka tea, I always call it turtle tea. Yeah. <laughs> and so the fourth habit I developed while I was living out in Japan is bowing. Now, I'm from Midwest, as you guys know, from small town in, in Ohio. We have nods and, you know, you also see this in Japan, too. It's, you know, typically called like the Gaijin nod. So just kind of acknowledging one's existence. So we basically did the same thing out in Ohio. Like if you knew somebody from your hometown, whether or not you knew them very well, but you just kind of seen them around town, you know, just a little, you know, hey, you know, just a slight little nod. And I, I even do it in my videos too. You know, I do the coming up. <laughs> so it's just that little slight nod. So going from to wasn't that bad of a transition. You know, it was a little less tilt and, you know, just more forward head motion. Also, I'm 5'9", uh, 5'10", five five on a full moon with a fully stretched back. So there's some places where the ceiling's a little low and most of the time it can get by, but sometimes it's a little bit lower than usual. So sometimes you kind of have to bow your head to uh, just get through. But, uh, you know, if you're six foot and up, yeah, you're gonna be bowing a lot, whether or not you want to or not. So, <laughs> hope you get used to it. And the fifth and final habit I developed while living out in Japan is taking baths and showers at night before bed. I started doing this actually when I was a little kid. Uh, my mom would make us all take a bath uh, before bed just cause it was easier. And in the mornings she had to like get ready for work and there was like no time, you know, you had to like get your stuff and get to the bus quickly as possible. So for convenience sake, it just made more sense to uh, take baths at night and ended up carrying those habits over into my adult life. And it's actually a nice relaxing end to uh, a long work day for me, as it were. You know, even when I was uh, living out in Japan, and especially with those deep Japanese tubs, I started developing habits of just bathing at night. Every two or three days or so, I would get a bag of Epsom salts um, I could get them on base and stuff like that. And you can get them out in Japan too, although it's uh, different brands and stuff. Get a bag of Epsom salts, uh, put like a cup or so into the bath and uh, just soak. And uh, it's so good for the skin, so good for the body to just relax after a long work week. Just relax the muscles and just the tension just eases from you. And it's also really good for the skin too. So for those who don't know, I do have very uh, sensitive skin, so I have to be very uh, cognizant of what uh, shampoos, detergents, stuff like that I use, because otherwise I start breaking out and it's uh, it's not a pleasant sight. But uh, I do take care of myself, you know, for those who don't know, I'm 34 years old. I think I'm uh, doing pretty all right as, uh, as far as taking care of my skin goes. But uh, yeah, taking a nice hot soak in a deep Japanese tub and then afterwards having a nice cold can of chew high. Uh, can't beat it, man. It's the best. So yeah, those are the five habits I developed while I was living out in Japan. And so question of the day, if you've lived abroad, whether it was in Japan or elsewhere, what are some habits that you developed from living in that country? Let me know in the comments down below in the boopity boops. And with that said, guys, this is the Andy San signing for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.